Today I want to talk to you about arts and education. Do you get that expensive degree? First off, it depends on your specific situation. If you're from a family with a lot of money, then it's about what program can you get into, what do you want to go to, and you don't really have to worry so much about this decision. It is time in your life, and certainly you should understand the expectations of what you're going to get out of that decision, so stick around, but the initial decision is a little easier. If you're from a family that maybe has some money to put towards your education or no money to put towards your education, you have to think about the long-term impact of this decision. So I'm gonna start by talking about myself a little bit. I did very well in high school. I got into two Ivy League colleges. One of them was my dream school. I didn't go to either of them. Yes, it was a heartbreaking decision to make. And sometimes I think I was shafted and it's unfair that I worked so hard and I didn't get to go. But when I looked at what the bill was going to be, right off the top, I knew I was going to come out of school $150,000 in debt without even trying. You could buy a house for that. Now, if you're going to school for a med degree or some other thing that's, that's probably going to pay off, you know, in terms of money earning, that's different. But when you're going to school for the arts, you then have to think, okay, well, when I get out of school, how am I going to pay that off? How are you going to pay that off? I thought I was going to get out of school and direct theater originally. That's what I wanted to do. And I realized, well, I'm going to need money to put up shows for a while until I can build a name for myself. I'm not going to be earning a ton of money. Like, how am I going to put together money when I'm trying to pay back money? That's, that's just not, I'm defeated. I'm defeated before I even begin. Now I know what you're going to say, but didn't people tell you, Sherry, if you go to an Ivy League school, all the doors magically open and your life is all set. I knew someone who went to the Ivy League school I wanted to go to. I met her after she had graduated and I asked her if it made a huge difference. And she said the education was great. It was wonderful. I'm still flipping burgers like everyone else. Because that's the truth. Now, what happens when people go to these Ivy League schools? I do know a number of people have gone, so let's talk about it. If you're a filmmaker and you go to an Ivy League film school, some of those students, some, get their student film into big film festivals in the student film department. So there's a section of a lot of big film festivals, like Cannes, for example, that shows student films. And you think, well, see, Sherry, that's it. If you had gone, you did that, 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 that. But that's some of the students. Then what happens once they get in that festival? And we're going to talk about festivals and expectations for them. I love film festivals, but people have, I think, the wrong expectations. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going to break that down very honestly next time. But right now, you get into that festival. And some of the people who manage to be some of the people who get into those festivals at a young age, right out of school, some of them get agents. And you think, well, there you go. Well, some of those agents get them work directing commercials. There's a big industry there. It's fun. You travel the world. I know people who do it. They love it. It's great. But is that your prize? Is it? Because it is a big decision. Some of those people, the agents, try to get them directing jobs on TV. Maybe a few get them. Most do not. Most do not get their own films funded through that. And so what happens is a couple of years after school, those agents drop them because those agents are on to the next group of people coming out and so on. They're not bad people. They're in a business. And if it doesn't pay off in a few years, you've got to move on to the next person. So am I saying don't go to your dream school? I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying why are you going? Are you going because you want to learn from the people who teach there? Are you going because you're interested in the topic and you want the knowledge? Or are you going for some fantastic, sparkly, fairy dust expectation? You really have to think it all through. Why am I going? What am I expecting the outcome to be? Does that mean you don't get a degree? No. Does that mean you don't get a degree in what you want to learn about? Absolutely not. 
but you have to think it through. You know, also college is not for everyone. You know, some people, I know high schools push everyone to go to college. It has to do with funding for the high schools, but some people would prefer to go to vocational school and learn a craft that they can earn money at and then go ahead and pursue their arts. Harrison Ford did that. He was a carpenter. I don't know if he went to college as well. I have no idea. But he was a carpenter. Okay, you can go to a really great vocational school, save a lot of money, and be a great carpenter. So you have to decide what is it you want to do to earn a living, like we talked about in the Plan A video. If you didn't watch that, check it out. But seriously, we talked about that in the Plan A video. How are you going to earn a living while you're being an artist? Now, that college can be really great for that too, right? Because you can try classes in different things. Maybe you take a computer science class and you're like, I really like this. So maybe get certified in coding. You don't necessarily have to get a degree. Maybe you get a minor in it. Maybe you just go and get a certification. There are certification programs of five or six classes and you take a test. And that's how you can get a, earn a living, right? Sometimes you might take a class and go, oh, no, I don't like computer science. That's not for me, but I really liked this graphic design class. That's really great. You know why? You're going to need to develop a website for yourself. You just saved a lot of money. This is good for your craft, for you as an artist to promote yourself, and it's a way to earn a living while you're pursuing your art. I do want to come back to that. Now, I used to volunteer at a school before the pandemic, and I don't like to mention people's names on this because I don't want to suck anybody into my thing, but if you ever want to tag yourself because you know I'm talking about you, by the way, go ahead and do that in the comments. But I have a former student who I'm still friendly with, He's in his late 20s. He went to college. It wasn't for him. He went for a four-year degree, ended up getting a two-year degree, which is great, a nice associate's degree, solid. And I was asking him what he's up to, what his plans are. He's an actor. He does have a way to earn a living. He has a plan A. And he looked at me and said, well, I'm going to go back to school and get a BFA. And I was like, why? <laughs> which is terrible. I mean, if he wants to do that, he should do that. But when I asked him why... He said, well, I think I should. And the real question is, but what is the outcome? What is the expectation? Because I'm looking at him in particular, and I know other people who do this. They take classes with people in New York City who have recognizable names. They either work with a studio that's known, or they actually teach at an Ivy League school, but also teach outside of it. You can learn from some of the people that you want to learn from without going to the expensive school. Sometimes the expensive schools, by the way, as an aside, have certification programs in performance. So an Ivy League school might have a five-class program that makes it possible for you to meet those teachers and work with them without going into the hole so much. But putting that aside, this particular person I'm talking about, he's studying with people that have recognizable names that are affiliated with smaller theater companies and productions that are very respected it's like, why would you leave that? Like you're building a network, you're moving forward. So obviously he might have his own reasons. This isn't about him, but I'm sure there's other people like him out there, hopefully watching this. And I just like to say, stop and think, why do you just think you should? There are no shoulds in life. Not really. Okay. There really aren't. People will, will make you feel like you need to do something but ask yourself why you are doing it. If you want to be a college professor, then that's a whole different thing because academia, it matters a lot what program you went to because you're bringing that knowledge to their program. It's a different thing, right? If you want to teach theater, you want to teach painting, whatever it is, that's a different story. I'm talking about for your craft as an artist, what do you think it's going to do for you? What it's going to do for you is teach you. That's it. That's the expectation that you need to have, I think, in my opinion. You don't have to agree. But to me, that's the expectation. And I have to tell you, I cannot remember the last time someone asked me what school I went to. I don't think anybody ever asked me that. It's possible when I first got out of school, because that's what you ask people. But no one's asked me that in terms of a producer wanting to come on board my projects or someone hiring me as an editor. I didn't go to school for editing. I taught myself to edit. Yes, I've taken classes here and there to learn certain skills, but in the beginning, I just got the program and started learning. 
and I worked for free as an editor, and I worked on my own stuff as an editor, and we'll talk about when you work for free and when you don't work for free and where you draw that line another time, but I found my own way. I didn't go to film school, okay? I decided to make films later in life, which means a few years after college, <laughs> and when I decided that a lot of people said, are you going to go back to school? And I thought, oh, no. No, I don't want to accrue all this debt. I want to have money to make films. So I worked on people's sets. I, I just helped out. I didn't know anything. I just started shooting stuff. I got a cheap camera and started shooting. And now you can use your phone, for God's sake. Like, you can just go out and start making things. It's not the be-all, end-all way to make films. There's a craft to it. I'm not saying, you know, just get a phone and you're a filmmaker. You're not your person with a phone that has a camera. But... The point is that you can start out that way. You can start learning. You can get on people's sets. And yes, they may not pay you because you're not offering them skills, but you're getting free education. Ask people, what films do you think I should watch? I happen to live with someone who loves films that they teach in film school. So we watch them. We talk about them. I've done that for years. I didn't go to school. I found someone who was willing to share their point of view. And I'm not saying you have to live with somebody to do that. I'm saying you can find people out there. You know, if I wanted to learn about hair and makeup, I would sit down with a hair and makeup person who's doing it in the industry and say, hey, can you give me 20 minutes? Can, can I learn a little from you? Not how to do it, but just like, what, what could I do right now that wouldn't cost me money to start learning? Could I, could I maybe help out on a film? Like if you know a filmmaker and you're like, hey, I want to get into set design. Hey, you have a set design department. Do they want a PA, a production assistant to help out? I'm free. I'd love to come on. I doubt anybody's going to say no. We always need extra hands. So there's lots of ways to learn is my point. And you may eventually decide you need to take a few classes. That's fine. But do it for the right reason. Do it because you want to learn and there's a skill you need to learn and you feel that that's the best way for you to learn it.